Okay, uh, in case you're just joining us, the program is The Breakfast on Plus TV Africa. And we're having a field day. It's a Friday for crying out loud. That <laughs> means that uh, we're just unwinding and taking things easy. Right after this, we just knock off the suits and everything and just run into wherever we're going to tap into the current of nature as it is. And one of those places uh, recommended will be like a beach. We have beaches all around us, even where we are here, there are so many beaches and all that. But the question is, how much do we patronize these kind of places that nature has given to us that will make our bodies, uh, you know, respond to, <laughs> to nature as it is? And if you feel the breeze in the beach, you know, it's something else. But who am I to talk about this? Uh, there's someone who uh, is more knowledgeable about things concerning especially the beach uh, as a place of relaxation and unwinding and all that. I'm talking about the general manager of Atikan Beach Resort and Hotels, Mr. Ogwa Godwin, who has just joined us on the program today. Good morning and welcome to the show. Good morning to you. Thanks for having me. Good yeah. morning, everyone. We like, we like the fact that you are even looking the way you're looking now, right now. <laughs> it's very good. And, um, it's a weekend look. Yeah, yeah, it's a weekend look. Uh, now, we'd like to know, beginning this uh, segment of the show, uh, beach-going experience. Tell us about how it's been, if it is growing or going down. What's the experience like? Are people going to the beach more or they're going to the beach less? And what is the reason for that? Uh, well, if I, if I look back, Back in the day, the days of uh, Babish, uh, in the days of um, Lekki Beach, in the days of um, uh, Alpha Beach, in the days of um, Aleko Beach, I will tell you pointedly that the beach going has reduced because it's not like the way it used to be back in the day. And uh, I think the reason for this, perhaps, is because of maybe the economic situation and maybe the trend, the, the trend, I mean, the, the idea of uh, wanting to unwind at the beach is gradually reducing uh, because of alternatives that people have, you know, these days. You know, back in the day, there weren't much lounge, there weren't much uh, cinemas, you know, just like a one-way a one -way shop. You want to have a cool time, it's the beach. But now there are a lot of alternatives. So... It looks as if, to me, the way it is now, uh, beach going has actually reduced. Well, I, sorry, Maureen. I just, you, you mentioned like four or five beaches when you started. But right now, um, don't you think one of the factors is also because the beaches are even more? There are private beaches right now. In Aja already, for instance, we have numerous beaches running up to hundreds. Small ones, big ones, and all that that you can find in Aja. Don't you think because of the number of these uh, beaches, concentration on particular ones may have reduced? I don't particularly think so, because um, looking at the population, the number of people you have, for instance, in Lagos State, if everybody have that um, feeling that we used to have back in the day, and the fact that you don't have alternative places to go to other than, you know, the beach, uh, it's not even enough, if I may say. It's not enough. If you look at uh, the number of beaches we have in, in, in my artists, for instance, if like two million people come and say, okay, let's go to the beach, it will not be enough. It will be crowded, it will be overcrowded. I don't know if you have an idea of how it looks like, you know, the days of Bar Beach. I don't know if you have an idea of that, but when I was growing up, I tell you, Bar Beach used to be crowded in such a way that you'd be wondering, is it that every, oh, everybody in Lagos State are all here. If you go to uh, Lekki Beach back in the day, the whole place would be overcrowded. You'd be wondering, is it that everybody in Lagos have decided to come to the beach, you know, on these weekends? I think basically it's because of the economic empowerment, you know, people are 
money reserved for entertainment. Was it was it paid for? Used. Was was a bar beach paid for? Like you want to go to the bar beach? Would, did you need to pay money? I wasn't here then, so but I was hearing about the bar beach. Everybody wanted to be in Lagos to to experience the bar beach, for instance. Uh, but was it paid for? Because right now some beaches before you enter you pay through the nose. <laughs> You're right. Though. Uh, those are private beaches. But then, uh, bad beach back in the day, you don't pay. You know, it's, it's an open beach. It's open. Everybody just, except that you want to take some of those tents that they have then there, you have to pay for that. But as far as the uh, accessibility, it was free. All right. Well, I experienced bad beach. I experienced lucky beach and it was they were good experiences to Love have you. would you be in the position to tell us the beach life across nigeria let's not just talk about lagos mm. i mean i know we have we had a young i don't know if we still have it i want to believe we do yankari game yes. reserve in bochi we have a beach in delta asaba we have in Port Agu. we have several would you say the same fate uh, they're experiencing the same fate as lagos beach life is or is there any difference well, I'm not in a position to know exactly what happens in one in all these plans you mentioned, right? because um, I've actually not been there. I, 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 the only experience I have is the experience in Lagos, yes. Mm. So is there no kind of regulatory um, organization that uh, monitors the beach, controls the beach owners? or Because obviously there are more private beaches now emerging in Lagos, which has seen to the increase in the cost of being able to enter these beaches. I mean, I went to some of them recently to, to make inquiries, and I was, they, they are beautiful. Yeah, they beautiful, are. Beautiful, but expensive. And also, they come with so much rules that we didn't have in the days of Bar Beach and Lekki Beach. Now, you can't go with your food and drinks in some of these beaches. If you have to, uh, they will have to charge you mm -hmm. exorbitantly. Is there no organization that's in charge of that? Well, at the moment, um, uh, there, there isn't any organization that regulates the activities, uh, you know, uh, around the private beaches. Uh, there's none. There's none at the moment, other than the taxes you pay to the state government, you know, consumption tax and, uh, and all of that. I uh, know everybody just, like, do what they think is good for them. You know, every, every beach owner just formulates you know, regulations that, that, that works for him. For instance, in Atikan Beach, you know, we don't charge people for bringing in food and drinks. And uh, we just allow you to bring your stuff and they will just charge you gate fee and perhaps um, the tents, the cabanas where you want to stay to have your party, you know. Uh, but other beaches I hear do charge cockage from bringing in food and drinks uh, into their uh, premises. But we don't. So what I'm trying to say in essence is that every... Oh, no. Oh, no. We do not need this, <laughs> this Okay, Maybe he was trying to say every, every beach has its own rules. They follow their own rules. Nobody regulates them. And I, yeah. I don't know. Mr. Oga, are you there? I would have loved to ask if he would want, if he would suggest uh, some sort of regulation, you know, in that sector. Because uh, some of the beaches, uh, especially the public ones, the private ones are good. They are clean. They are well kept. And, mm -hmm. uh, and that may, in one way or the other, justify the cost of, you know, entering those places. If you would remove uh, uh, the, the, the restriction on what you can bring in, mm -hmm. you understand, people may not really mind paying to go in. But if you wouldn't let me bring in my food and my drinks, and your f drink is selling for bottle of malt for 1,800 naira, mm -hmm. not many people will be willing to go spend that much money. And most people who go to the beaches, they, it's, for them it's most times picnic. They want to go with friends yeah. and family. Yeah. And so they want to be able to go with different kinds of food and drinks to their taste. But if you compel them to buy your expensive food there, how many people, I mean, not everyone is, is swimming in millions and billions, you get me? I went to a beach, um, Last year, I went to a beach and I wanted to sit down. And they told me that to sit on that seat will cost me 4,000 naira, just to sit. So I, I was now imagining if I want to buy food 
or I want to buy a drink, how much was I going to spend uh, to sit on that seat? <laughs> and <laughs> Somebody will say, okay, you're thinking like a poor man. Okay, uh, if I think like a poor man, and I'm not poor, uh, what about the other person who actually may not be able to afford it? And because I'm able to pay and I'm paying effortlessly, that person doesn't have the opportunity to even visit nature because of what is obtainable or not obtainable at that time. How do I pay 4,000 Naira to sit on a seat? And then a beer is 3,005 or is it 4,000 that we're charging because it's at the beach. Yeah. And then if I'm bringing a cooler of rice to the place, I think they were talking about 30,000 30, or something per kilo. To, to bring that cooler of rice. Mm. So that One I, kilo? Yes. So That's one, one cooler. So if, if you would need to go in with four coolers, yes, then you pay them 120,000 uh -huh. so, so, just to bring your cooler. <laughs> so are you telling me you just have a caterer there? I should just tell me. Just tell me one time now. Make a year. I, you so, know, another thing that I would have asked, because uh, if you notice, these private beaches, which are, um, you know, uh, one of the public beach, mm -hmm. apparently either rented part of its beaches to them or sold part of it, which has reduced mm -hmm. the space that this other public one used to have, mm -hmm. making the place tight and congested. Yeah. And also, the fact that they can no longer uh, go, they ca people can, not many people can afford these private beaches, now makes traffic to this very public yeah, one yeah. so much. So much. Mr. Ogwa, um, you, you're back. We're glad that you're back. Um, we're just pondering on some of these things, and we're wondering if you can just give us more light. First of all, Maureen was trying to get from you. If you would want some kind of regulation or... Who wants to be regulated? <laughs> or you just want to do your business and mind your business. You don't want anybody to be nosy about what you do. Are you comfortable with the fact that there's no regulatory body uh, for the beaches? Mr. Ogwa. Are you, are you to be honest, to be honest, um, I, don't, I think it is better that there should be a kind of regulation because as it is now, it looks as if it's an upcomer thing. And uh, some of these uh, investors uh, just think about profit, profit, and profit. You know, It's a long-term investment. It's not, it's not a short term. Mm -hmm. You set up a beach, you don't expect to... Recover you your know, capital in a jiffy. You don't, you don't expect that. So it, it's, it's basically for entertainment. So you need to make... Uh, uh, those who want to patronize your, your facility, you make it a little bit pocket friendly. Mm -hmm. you know? So if there's a regulation, it will make it much better than it is now. You know, I think it's, 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 it will be a welcome idea if there is a regulation. Another thing that the regulation would also bring in is the fact that the public wants will become cleaner. Because today, they are very dirty. I mean, you go there, you see all manner of debris mm. all over yeah. the beaches, every, all over the beach. And you begin to ask yourself, who are those, who are the managers? Does this beach have a manager? Mm -hmm. As you're going in, definitely you'll be tasked. You know, you pay to enter and all of that and all of that. And then you have all manner of seats and couches there for rent and all of that. Is there no manager to make sure that this place is cleaned up? Mm. But that, that brings the question, is there no internal regulation? Because even, even bus drivers have associations, uh, petty traders have associations, there is association for snail sellers, there's association for butchers, association for this. I'm sure the beach will have association of beach owners, or I, I hope you have. And if you do have, is there no internal kind of regulation that you give to yourself and to meet some kind of standards? Or does everybody just have to do anything they please and you don't have anybody to hold you? Do you have an association in the first place? Maybe that, maybe, maybe that, that might come up tomorrow. But as of today, well, as I speak to you right now, there isn't any association. Even right here on my axis, the Kwaja axis, where we have uh, almost about 10 to 15 beaches, you know, we were the first that came there. Atitan Beach was the first private beach in Okwaja. 
you know, after us, a lot of other beaches are springing up. I've tried severally just to form a WhatsApp platform where we all can chat and have, you know, some kind of uh, conversation on common issues that affect us. But I tell you, up to this moment, nobody's responding. It's more like some of them take it as a competition. Uh, why would you want to tell us what we should do? Uh, I think it would be nice if the uh, Lagos State Ministry of uh, Tourism, Waterfront, I mean, Tourism, tourism comes in to regulate yeah. this, this uh, 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 beach business. I think I should establish at this point that Plus TV did reach out to the Lagos State Government, the, yeah. the ministry in charge, to so that we can have a balance and have some answers to some of these problems we have seen. Because another thing that regulation would do is ensure safety of people who yeah. go to the beach. Mm. Uh, you've had exactly. people, yeah, there have been people who were exactly. who drowned. Yeah, there, there are so many beaches without a lifeguard. Yeah, True. who ensure safety me, at these beaches. Let me, come, let me come in here. You see, Atikan Beach is the only beach that is certified by the Lagos State Ministry of Tourism. Trust me on that. We are the only beach. You see, before you set up a beach, there are things that need to you know, be put in place. Like you rightly mentioned, the lifeguard. People go to some beaches and people just get drowned for just no reason. I mean, things that could have been prevented, there are no lifeguard. Most of them are just interested in collecting the gate fee, yeah. collecting money, like you said, money for chairs and tables, collect cockage and all of that. But by and large, the safety of the people that comes there it's not paramount, you know, in their minds. So I think now that the beaches, uh, 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 the private beach business is coming up of age now, people are beginning to invest and you're having more of them coming up. I think it is time that the Lagos State government should, you know, get them certified. You must have a certificate to operate. It's not an all comma thing. You must be certified. I tell you, we have almost 15 beaches here. The only Atikan has a certificate to operate as a beach. That is just that is just the truth. So it's high time I think the government should begin to look into this because people come to the beach and some of them don't go back home because of uh, joining issues and, and stuff like that. They just say assuming that the beach is at the swimmers' risk and all of that, they put all, all, all form of signs there. But they don't have lifeguards. They don't have like the issue of cleaning you mentioned, mm -hmm. if you come to Atikan Beach as I speak to you now, you will hardly find one debris on, on my beach because it's it's compulsory that the beach has to be clean, 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 clean. But some other beaches don't mind; they just collect gate fee and the people just go there and the, all the debris, all what you know, the the, the sea brings deaths every day, all, mm -hmm. all forms of deaths, just. Wake up in the morning, you go to the shoreline, you see heaps of dead that the sea has brought in from the river, you know. And then some of them just find, they just see that, well, after the water, we take it back. And they leave it there. To me, it's not ideal. So I think regulation is the key that can make things better for beach, private beach experience for those who want to go. Okay, we will definitely, since, we will definitely yes. Plus TV is definitely going to reach out again to yeah. the ministry, the relevant ministry in Lagos State, so that we can see how these problems can be solved, how the regulation can be put into place, yeah. and safety and cleanliness ensured for yeah. Lagos beach lovers. I was, just, I was just going to ask him, since we are definitely going to do this, what are some of these concerns? that if you had the opportunity to talk with the Minister of Tourism or Waterfront or whatever relevant minister, ministry has to collaborate to make sure the beach experience is different, what are some of these concerns that you'd want to address? What are some of the questions you would have loved to ask so that when we have that opportunity, we also will be better informed with your experience to ask these questions and get the answers that you need? Well, first and foremost, um, I would... Um want to ask that the Ministry of Tourism, Waterfront, should ensure that for you to set up a beach, a private beach, there must be rules and regulation that guides such operations. That is just the basic 
thing I think is very, very key and necessary. You don't just raise money and buy land by the shoreline and say, I want to set up a beach. There must be conditions that is attached to you being able to set up such a business. As it is now, it's free. It's an all common thing. The last time the Commissioner for Tourism and the Waterfront came visiting, we raised some questions. And then she said, we were going to look at it, you know. But up until this moment, I'm yeah, talking to you. Nothing has been done. I think it's high time the government look this way. Okay. This business, this private big business. Okay. I think it's high time they look at it. It is high time. Try yeah. yeah. to high regulate time. it as much as possible. Yes, if yeah. Nigerians. Indeed, Lagosians who have been <laughs> we like who are known to go through. We Apart from should, that, be, Lagos has become synonymous with uh, stress, mm. the traffic, and all of mm. that. And so, people need avenues to unwind, especially to communicate mm. with nature, yeah. such as going to the beaches that we have. So, thank you so much yeah. for your time, Mr. Ogwa uh, Godwin. Thank you very much for uh, being a part of our show this morning. Uh, we will visit your beach one day and hope that our throats will not be cut. Uh, we'll come there, Plus TV will come there with our, our crew to unwind. That'll be nice, right? <laughs> okay. All right. Okay. We'll hit you up and then come. All right. Uh, we'll be, we've been talking with Mr. Ogwa God, uh, Godwin, General Manager at Tikam Beach Resort and Hotels, and we'll take a short break. We'll be back in a moment for sports. Stay with us.